Catching up with Jonathan Lucroy, brought to you by Quick Trip. Well, it's uh, it's kind of a big week. Uh, a lot of talk about you. We've, been, we've mentioned it a few times this year, but now it's like down to the crunch time with you. And uh, Jack Sorensic today said you were going to Cleveland. Jack, uh, you know, he's like, they all know. Jack, uh, you know, Jack, Jack and might I know. <laughs> Jack and I had lunch about a week after I was drafted, right over there on Fridays. Yeah. He was the scouting director here then, yeah. and uh, I've always been a big fan of Jack. I like Jack a lot. But you know, obviously, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. But yeah. maybe nothing. Right. So. You know, whatever happens, we'll uh, you know we'll figure it out from there. But for right now, like I said, I told I said this a lot on Brewer until someone tells me different. I'm yeah. gonna play for them and do my best to win for them. If we went to your house, would there be a bag packed or anything that you have to be ready for this? Because you they no. probably would I want my, you quickly. My suitcase is out, but it's always out because yeah. I'm on road trips every other week, you yeah. know, every week or whatever. So it's uh, you know, not, there's nothing. You know, like I said, I'm 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 a Brewer until someone tells me different. Does it help that you're such a that you do have a preparation to each day that you're able to stay focused? Because there's guys you'll see them a week or two before the trade deadline take a dive in average right. because they're so focused on other things. So. No, I, I've, I've I've always had a I've always had the ability to to push negative stuff out. Not really negative, but push thoughts out that can be distracting. Yeah. And um, you know my. Uh, a, a psychologist told me it's called hyperfocus. There's yeah. a term for it, actually. And, yeah. You know, it's the ability to block everything out while you're in the moment. Yeah. And I've always been able to do that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing because some guys can't. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I've uh, it doesn't bother me. I mean, obviously, you can't help but think about it and see it. But, yeah. You know, it's just um, I think it's a natural human reaction to wonder what your future is with anything yeah. you're doing in life. So, you know, obviously, with uh, with us here. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. And uh, but, like I said, um, I'm a brewer, and that's what I'm going to be. And uh, I'm going to do my best to win yeah. as a brewer. And if that changes, then that changes. I mean, one of the things we do like about you, and we like almost 25, 30 percent of things about you, uh, is you're kind of self-deprecating. But during all this, that's like 25 percent. 25, yeah, yeah. There's, you, you've always been kind of mean spirited. I'm me. just glad but, that. Yeah. You know, that's uh, I'm getting something. Yeah, it's something. There's, there's a mutual respect. Here. Yeah, just a little bit, though. But you are pretty self-deprecating, and that's kind of your charm, one of your charms. <laughs> but to read all the stuff that, I mean, the value of you, are you learning, wow, maybe you have more value than you even thought? I mean, I think you were self-confident. Uh, the but... thing is, is like, you know, I try not to get too high on everything because, yeah. um, in my opinion, the higher you get, the farther you fall, like pride cometh before the fall. Yeah. I think that's a good. That's a good that's one. A good, that's a good. quote. Yeah. And uh, I think that the higher you get on yourself, the more pride you have. Um, you know, if when you do fail, you're going to fail harder. And I, I just find that, you know, whenever you're, if you're hard on yourself about things and you're realistic about things, that you can fail at any time. I think that, for me, I'm able to stay more consistent. That's what works for me. Some other people can't. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I do that because it, uh, you know, it helps me to stay grounded and. I keep working hard. I take pride in my work yeah. um, and my hard work I put in, my preparation. You know, but as far as myself, I, I let other people do that for me. The the Luke chant seemed to yeah. I mean, even with the Cubs filling this place, and it made me sad. Let alone you, how how many Cub fans there were. But that Luke chant seems to have picked up even more steam. I don't know if they're just trying to make sure they the people here are making sure they know. Well, the Brewers fans are saying Luke. They're saying and Luke. the Cubs fans are saying Boo. No, they weren't. They were just sure? saying they can't even. They don't even dislike you. I was sitting with a, nothing but Cub fans. Oh, but Lacroix's cool. That was basically cool. the. Uh, well, Lacroix's cool. We hate that guy, but Lacroix's cool. <laughs> that was basically it. <laughs> Can you notice that? That uh, they're kind of showing you, people around here, what you mean to this town. Hey, hey, it's. Uh, Definitely an honor. I mean, it, I grew up here, yeah. and uh, I was drafted by the Brewers. A lot of people here I consider family, you know, and brothers, and people I've come up with. And uh, you know, it's well, if something does happen, it's going to be a sad day. Yeah. It's going to be bittersweet, I guess. But it'll be it'll be sad to leave all everybody I know, and even the people that work here at the stadium. You know, I've known them since I came up, so it's yeah. it's going to be a tough day. But you know, it's that's why life is, and I uh, just got to deal with it and move on. And uh, we'll get away from it then. Let's talk. Because let's talk. Uh, this is a question from Steve, our man back here. Nice. Your feelings on throwback jerseys <laughs> after the Chris Sale magic that happened over the weekend? I thought it was pretty dramatic. <laughs> um, you know, I know that he's 
very uh, opinionated and stands up for what he, belie- what he believes in, which I totally agree with. Yeah. Um, I definitely think you should always stand up for what you believe in, no matter what it is. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, you know, you gotta <laughs> you gotta be realistic about the situation. And yeah, I agree. I hate throwback jerseys too. Yeah. When we gotta wear, I hate wearing the short the short pants because whenever I'm catching, they bunch up around my my knee and. Yeah. It pinches and believe me, it pulls your hairs and your leg. It's it's awful. It's, yeah. it's it's not. I don't know how they did it back in the day, but it's. I guess they were tougher. But you know, it's one of those things that we. Uh, I don't blame them. I mean, it's been really really hot here. Yeah. I don't blame them at all for uh, not wanting to wear them. Now the behavior after that, obviously, is something that is yeah. questionable. But I, other than that, I think that uh, I agree with them on everything else because this they are miserable to wear. They are. When you find out that throwbacks are coming, do you nair or do you shave or anything? Your knee, uh, kneecaps at all? What do you do? Wax? No. Wax? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> nair. That's actually a good idea. I'm thinking. I'm See, looking at that. I'm bringing something into your life here. Uh, Unless I'm getting something out of this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one of the things, because uh, again, uh, the other night, like uh, I was here Friday and Saturday, and it was different. Like the way you guys started out Friday night, it looked like you guys, most most of the guys on the field had not played baseball before. Then Saturday, you guys came out and played this beautiful game. A little and sloppy. It's, it's the magic of baseball. I uh, think. Uh, does it hit you like, wow, I can't believe we're that bad one night and that good the next. It's baseball, though. I mean, and especially when we have a young team. Yeah. You know, um, you know, guys make some mistakes, a little less consistent. And I'm, I'm including myself in that. Uh, you know, as a. If you're on a team that's kind of struggling, you, you fight to be more consistent. Cause consistency, consistency is what is makes you successful in baseball. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think that you see that sometimes with us. Sometimes we're really good. Sometimes we're really bad. You know. And uh, I, I don't think we've been we haven't really been in the middle a lot. We've kind of been on both ends, yeah. back and forth. Like be really really good one day, and the next day be really really bad. We haven't kind of been in the middle. So I think we need to fight for that. Okay, we talked about uh, Martin Maldonado a couple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, seeing him kind of put things together a little bit, hitting, you know, uh, it, when he was getting kind of ripped for getting out to the slow start, and it's hard to get out of that when you're not playing oh, as often. I mean, when he's, yeah. when it's like all of a sudden it's, okay, is that extra special to you? Because again, you you know all these guys, and you're kind of you two have that kind of that connection as catchers and all that. Yeah, like I've been playing with Maldi since A ball, known him for a long time, um, and. I get it. I know it's it's a hard catching's hard hard enough as it is. Hitting is hard enough as it is. Trying to you know hit every or go out and play every five six days yeah. and be successful at it's tough, especially in the big leagues. It's tough anywhere. I don't yeah. care where you're at. So um, you know he had a big hit for us last night, and uh, you know kind of that was a knockout punch really. And yeah. uh, you know that's what he does. This is his job to get in there every five or six days and. You know, give me a break and yeah. try to put some offense on there. And he did it last night. Did a good, really good job. Did really well. And uh, very fortunate to have him as a backup. And uh, I, I, getting back to that teammate thing, there's you know, there's a couple other guys that get all the talk uh, for that. This what this week means, uh, Jeremy and then uh, Will. Mm-hmm. I mean, they Jeremy for sure hasn't really been through rumors and all that in terms of trade stuff. Do you? I mean, do you help? With that, I mean, you. This is kind of new to you in a lot of ways, but still, he's actually been traded twice. Yeah, I've he, never been traded. He never so. had a rumor. It was just he was gone. Yeah, he was gone. <laughs> yeah, he was more of a prospect back then. But yeah, yeah it's one of those things that, uh, you know, I've seen it. You know, before just other guys going through it and dealing with it, and it's really helped me out this year. Just kind of not not worrying about it, not letting it get to you because you can't control it. So why even worry about it? You know, but uh, yeah, I, I think they're doing a good job. They didn't do a good job at it. I think as a younger player, you tend to let things get to you a little more. Yeah. So, you know, but they, I think overall they've done a, a good job of handling themselves. And of course, we're going to read into everything as Will had the bad outing Sunday. We'll see, that must have been it. It might have been. It's easy wasn't. to put blame on something else. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, it's for me, I, I think we're all baseball players and we're not thinking about being traded when we're trying to make pitches or we're trying yeah. to get hits or whatever. We're not thinking about being traded. We're just focused on that at bat or that pitch or whatever. So I, I, don't, I don't find that plausible. Okay, and uh, you mentioned Ricky a little bit, uh, and having uh, John Segura here too. Uh, to see those guys that you know had differing levels of uh, struggles, and I mean John's was the tragic one, uh, but having those guys kind of uh, find new life somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, you probably would have loved it if Ricky could have been with you though for 15 more years. I love playing with Ricky. I did. I, he was. Uh, he never compl- I never. Funny thing is, I know a lot of people gave him grief here, but you know, I never heard him complain one time. I didn't. That's, yeah. that's the truth. Yeah. That's, that really is the truth. I never did. 
And it's pretty amazing considering nowadays that everybody's complaining about something, but he yeah. never did. And uh, very, very tough individual. You know, bad game, good game. He never, he was always level-headed. He told me one time, he goes, I never expect anything from anybody. Yeah. That's why I try to keep it. And he did it. He uh, was really good at it. And uh, I'm happy for him. I'm glad to see him back on the field and playing. And I know he's not competing at the level that he wants to be at, but, you know, he's a, he's a good guy. And I enjoyed playing with him while we were together. And as far as Siggy goes, you know, he had needed a change of scenery. He had yeah. some, went through some tough times here with the uh, loss of his son and some tough years and uh, some tough contractual issues. And anyway, yeah. change of scenery for him, I think, was a good thing. And, uh, you know, it's been working out for him so far. In fact, back with Ricky, just because he's so quiet, I was around him when he was in the minors when I was up here. Yeah. And he's from the, the southern guy, quiet, yeah. quiet guy. Is it tougher when a guy doesn't really embrace talking about it, right? Because he's just this really nice, quiet guy that everybody that's around him liked. But when there's criticism in it, that's not his thing is to talk back. Did it almost hurt him at times that he was just this, okay, say what yeah, you I want, mean, I'm going to stay over I mean, here. I think it would bother anybody. Yeah. People talking talking about you like that. Whenever, I mean, he wasn't doing things on purpose. He right. just, you know, wasn't performing at the level he thought he should be. And yeah. people giving him, you know, grief about it, I think is that's a fan's perspective and they don't understand why. I mean, he's not a bad person at all. He's actually one of my favorite guys I've ever played with. Yeah. Because he's so tough and never complained. And uh, there's a lot of guys out there that are the exact opposite of him. And, you know, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm happy to see him back and playing. I really am. And finally, we're hoping this is not the last time we talk to you like this. You, you'll fly back in for these just for me? I mean, honestly, I'm kind of am happy. I'm what? hopeful that that's, this is the last time. That hurts my heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But we'll, Oh, I didn't say that uh, because of the Brewers, I said because right. of this. Because you don't like this. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's tough. This giant head <laughs> scares you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, it is, like I said, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. Yeah. You tend to have good nights after this. I don't know if you've noticed that. If you I, jinx me tonight, I swear. I you went deep for me on Saturday. Did I? Was my, my, wife, my wife was impressed, and she didn't really know she is. She's a Cub fan. I'm going to try to keep it simple at the ball hard. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So my wife's a Cub fan, so she doesn't know anything about baseball. Well, that's why yeah. she's good. Man. Exactly. <laughs> Catch more at my24milwaukee.com.